Hi, I'm Dave, and today I'm going to talk about a problem we face in society, which is that we don't have a conclusive answer to the question of how a dog would wear pants if a dog wore pants. With my paper, A Jogarithm for Applying Genes to Jobjects, I hope to address this issue. I believe the source of the problem is a lack of a principled mathematical approach to how one should wear pants. In this paper, I come up with a set of rules that you can use to score how well applied some genes are to a given target silhouette. And then combining that with a gradient-based optimization approach, you can then optimize for the best applied genes for any given shape. So I'm basing my work on a library called DiffVG, or Differentiable Vector Graphics from 2020. And what this lets me do is render a vector image and then take the derivative of something related to the pixel result of that rendering to optimize some loss function based on those pixels. So my approach is going to be apply some pants to a silhouette and then take the derivative of the loss function, which is based on the pixel result, and then update the position of the vertices of the pants until we've reached an optimal pants placement. Now we're going to start with what I call prototypical genes and then when we apply them to a shape, we're going to evaluate how well placed the genes are based on a few different principles. The first one I'm calling duality of man. The pants should bisect the silhouette of the wearer through its center, covering half of its area. Number two, no stretch genes. When the wearer wears pants, they should not be so deformed that they no longer resemble those prototypical genes. Three, topologically torn gene avoidance. Limbs should only go through the open ends of pants, and similarly, the closed ends of pants should not intersect any limbs. And finally, rule number four, dress code compliance. Pants should be on the body of the wearer, not off of it. So from rule number one, we get two loss terms. The first one incentivizes the middle of the waistband to be in the middle of the object. And number two counts how many pixels of the silhouette are covered by the genes and incentivizes that to be exactly one half. From rule number two, we get a loss term that incentivizes the optimized gene shape to be as close as possible to an affine transformation of the prototypical genes. So any deviation from like a perfect transform, that adds to the loss. From rule number three, we get three loss terms. The first one incentivizes the open ends of pants to intersect the silhouette. The second one incentivizes the closed ends of pants to not intersect the silhouette. And the third one disincentivizes any of the lines from intersecting each other. And finally, from rule number four, we get a loss term that disincentivizes having any pants pixels that are outside of the silhouette. We then try to minimize the weighted sum of all of those loss terms. So let's see how it does. First, we run the algorithm on a known case, so we know that it's doing what's expected. The only one known case is a human. Genes are only designed for humans. And so I've got this figure of a human, and it manages to successfully place the genes on it. Because genes aren't designed for anyone else, we can pretty safely extrapolate from this to any other shape that we give it. But as a treat for you, I also ran it on an ideal human, which is Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. I personally aspire to have this many limbs. Here, it also manages to place the genes on the legs, but it opts for a bold style of rolling up one of the pants legs in a manner not dissimilar from one strapping a backpack. Next, let's take a look at the original motivating example, a dog. Now in the original meme, two options were presented, one where the dog is bisected into two segments vertically and one where the dog is bisected into two segments horizontally. When our algorithm runs on the dog, we see it comes close to the two vertical sections. However, it's not exactly the same. The legs actually ride up so the derriere of the dog gets a little bit of breathing room. So now we know that neither was entirely correct, and here we have the definitive answer. Finally, let's just run it through some other random shapes. I tried to draw a horse without a reference and came up with something like this. I've done a study in the past and it turns out that one cannot draw a horse without a reference and have it turn out well. In this case, the algorithm would rather place the genes just on one leg than have the waistband be stretched to fit any more legs of the horse. Here the algorithm is run on a tripod alien and it manages to place the genes on one and a half legs and also does an interesting configuration where part of the crotch is stretched up to the shoulder in a one strapped overalls kind of situation. And finally, one more example with a dragon, where the genes are placed on one of its legs and, like the dog, has the other leg ridden up to give it some more breathing room. So now that we've presented a mathematically sound optimization approach to determining the optimal configuration of pants on any object, 
I should see no future work here. Case closed, there should be no more discussion on this point. If one is to take any lessons from this work, I would say consider rolling up one of your pant legs and maybe bringing one strapping back. Thank you for your time.